Yeah! Hey guys, uh, back with another uh, joint commentary. This time I'm with Chris Reichert. He is with Team Mike's Bikes. And um, if you've seen any of my videos, you know who he is because he's usually in front of me. So you can usually see him in my forward-facing camera. And uh, more importantly, he, um, he's been on uh, the podium in nationals a number of times in the road race and the time trial. So he can sprint and he can time trial and he's not a bad climber either. He knows how to race his bike. Uh, also, um, from the Snelling road race, he was uh, the guy with the gold wheels that beat me by an inch. That happened. I do. I do think that happened. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to happy to be here. I think this is uh, this will be fun to to see a perspective and and I knew this was a race that you guys weren't at and it was a big disappointment. Chico stage race, by the way, guys. This is a NorCal Classic. It's been around for a long time. Um, it is a uh, how many stages? Uh, so Chico is four stages. Four stages. You three days. Three days. Four stages. You you come out of the gate and you get a, a great circuit race. It's on the Thunder Hill course, which is a big. Uh, automotive road race course uh then you go into i think one of the best road races on the west coast out here the pasquenta road race oh, i love that i love that course gravel uh, yeah which which is is kind of known i think everybody that, that has raced it knows it for the gravel section there's a f uh, a 45 mile lap you do twice and uh, there's about five miles of gravel per lap. But I do think that the thing that most people overlook is the 16 mile section of gnarly crosswind. This year uh, especially, I heard. Every year. Uh, it, it's the thing that catches everybody off. I think everybody has some story about how they went into a gutter and you know they lost a wheel and everything breaks up. Yeah. It's just Armageddon. Uh, then you go from uh, the road race, uh, which is typically Saturday, and you go to Sunday with a time trial and the crit, which we're gonna talk through today. Yeah, so um, so how were you guys doing in the race at this point? We, um, I think we had done a really great job. We um, we were all coming off some pretty good fitness from Redlands, uh, which we, we had an, an, a nice time down at. Uh, we had uh, Sam Anderson Moxley, who finished 10th on the overall down there, and for uh, you know a humble elite team from Northern California to go compete with the pros, I think everyone should be proud of that if you're a NorCal racer to, to, to have talent like that around here. Um, we also had four top tens uh, at the race down there, which was outstanding. Um, so we had that fitness and we were carrying it in here and we knew that we had some really good G GC threats. Um, uh, Sam, of course, with his performance that he had at Redlands was out of control. Uh, just he, so talented. This is him right in front of you, right? Exactly. And, and we're actually we're watching him on the screen. Did he right go now. down? He's got some bandages on his arm. Uh, yeah, he just was testing the pavement. Oh, okay. How was it for him? Yeah, it seemed a little abrasive. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, we had to cover him up on that. Uh, that was actually from a crash at Redlands. Um, oh, okay. So that wasn't from this race. No, hard pavement there, too, surprisingly. Uh, so Sam, again, like super talented and a uh, great GC opportunity for, for us and, and Mike's Bikes. Uh, also, Steven Vogel, for anybody that has seen Steven Vogel, uh, you should just Dr. Vogel. Yeah, Dr. Vogel. You should, you should hate it. He, uh, <laughs> oh, I do. He's, he's handsome. Uh, he can literally do 450 watts for an hour. Uh, he's a doctor. Literally, uh, right? Lovely wife. Well, at some point, you know, like, he's just the guy that you, you, you just should grumble at when you wake up. Uh, Mr. But Mr. Oh, Steele, your girlfriend. Exactly. But but also one of the nicest guys you could ever meet. So so Steven was going to throw down a super mean time trial, uh, which he did, uh, ultimately. And so and that was the morning. That, this is the very last stage. This is the morning of, uh, of the crit, right? The exactly. So, so we're coming into the crit here, which is the fourth and final stage. And so just, you know, kind of wrapping up where, where we were as a team there, we... Um, we had had some difficulties, but ultimately Steven Vogel was in second place on the overall uh, to Eno from Semperporo. Um, Semperporo has kind of come around in the last, uh, I don't know, maybe year or so uh, with Corey Lockwood and Eno. Uh, Justin Paulson from Northern California is also on the team uh, as, uh, as, as their sprinter. Um, oh, here you go. I think something's happening there. Oh, maybe this is a, um, a point slot? No, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> you just wanted to see That's what a thousand earlier. I think we're just testing it. I don't know. I want to see what a thousand watts Literally, feels like. Yeah, no, no idea. I think you're. Oh, maybe that is lap 10? Where are no, we? Uh, no, we haven't gone through 10 laps. We're yet, not through we? 10 laps? No, I no, don't no. think so. This is you. You're just you're just testing your legs out. Because remember, guys, he's um, everyone's already done a what 25 minute? Well, 20 minute for you guys. <laughs> 25 for me. 25 minute time trial. And this is a. a the fourth stage in three days. So like, I am not a stage racer. Um, I'm good for 60 minutes, that's about it. And um, I'm usually pretty gassed by by the fourth day when I've done Chico. I've done Chico like four times. 
it's a hard race. I, I, are, are we sure we're on my camera here? I have no idea what I'm doing. Why did I do that? <laughs> uh, I feel like I should be a better bike racer than what I just did there. No one should do that, just attacking out of the blue. Yeah. Um, anyway, so um, Stephen Vogel's sitting in second. We wanted to preserve that. Um, we had a pretty big, sizable gap between uh, second place and first place, but we thought that if we were cheeky and uh, we, we tired Semper Poro out because they had so few numbers, they really only had uh, two guys that were able to contribute to chasing. We thought that if we could put them in a position where we could put Vogel up the road in the last 20 minutes of the crit, uh, that, heck, maybe, you, you never know. There's yeah. a 10 second time bonus. Why not we, try? We could do something, right? So, so that was what one was goal. What was the time gap? Uh, 22 seconds. Oh, so very achievable. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's not often that a that a breakaway sticks in a crit like this, but hey, it's 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 something. We we wanted to make a plan. We came in to win the stage race. We didn't come in to, to just be happy with second, and so we, we we looked at the opportunity and how we could we could go for that. Uh, the secondary uh, goal was for me to take back the green jersey. I took the green jersey uh, on the first day by winning uh, a few of the sprints there. Um, but on day two, I suffered two mechanicals and ended up uh, pretty far back. Uh, so I wasn't able to compete for the intermediate or the final sprint. Uh, and You're lost. doing a ton of work right now, yeah, by the way. That's all right. Well, it's <laughs> fine. Uh, I ended up losing it to Alexi Vermeulen, uh, and Alexi is a remarkable athlete and such a nice dude as well. You might recognize the name because he is a legit pro. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, the race was really wonderful this year because we had uh, Alexi that came to race who's now really focused on 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 mountain bike racing he'll be at Sea Otter this week um, depending on when this video goes live um, but then uh, also Dan Craven and um, Tyler Williams uh, all were previous cycling academy riders uh, so we had three world tour guys that were, that yep. were racing with us which was really fun um, so yeah so that's that's kind of where we were we wanted to take back the green jersey I was sitting four points down as we came into the crit there are three intermediate sprints plus the finish and we knew we needed to win them all so the team was trying to set me up for that and likewise we were trying to make sure that we were tiring out Simper Poro uh, to make sure they had to be responsible for the chase at all times nice yep yeah you're doing a lot of work at the front here um, I do that yeah you do it's, I don't know why it's just uh, I think Roman Roman yells at me most of the time my, our team captain on Mike's bikes is Roman Killen uh, who I, I owe a lot of respect to because he's he's been one of the folks here you go again kept me in races i again why am i doing this are I we sure know. this is my camera um it is. I, it is. I know it's it is mine. i know it is <laughs> i was at home <laughs> getting uh getting twitter updates on what was what was happening in this race so <laughs> this definitely isn't my footage but um yeah you're on the you're on the front right now i yeah i don't know, I don't know that was the technical here. section though so let's talk about the course maybe i was about ready to toss you over to it so yeah, yeah um you 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 have done this course so we're, we're coming through the last corner here um as we come through the start finish, why don't you give us a, a lap tour? Sure. This is the last straightaway, right? This is the last straightaway. Yeah, where you're gonna hit this yeah. left-hand corner. So this is this is the final corner, and um, there isn't much space between this final corner and the finish line. So you want to be like top three through here if you want to win this bike race. I, I honestly like we always talk about it when we're getting ready to sprint, as as you kind of want to come out of that corner first. It's so, not long. So like I've said in, in some other videos, and there goes Alexi right there. Alexi is in the green jersey. Um, uh, so you he's he's wearing the green jersey today, so that's something that's important for me. Uh, you know, looking to take those points back to make sure that he doesn't get into a break and sit up the road for for too long. Where if he snags one of those points or a couple of those points, then it really puts me in a bad position. So, um, so yeah, you you want to sprint for that last corner. You think of the last corner as the finish line, basically. Exactly. And we are not keeping track of, of uh, laps here, but you do have um, you do have sprint points that you are trying to defend. And um, we were talking about the course for a second. Um, let's talk about, uh, maybe let's, let's do a lap here. So um, that's the uh, technical section right through there. Good place for attacks to go. Yeah. You can take really fast lines. The, the, the interesting thing I think with, with the Chico Crick course for, for anybody that's raced it or anybody that's maybe watching, uh, you know, it's a downtown crit. The surface changes a lot. You get a lot of um, a lot of cobblestone or a lot of uh, like paving stones. Uh, they're relatively smooth, but there are some pretty unique things that you'll see inside of the course. We're we're coming back now uh, through the start finish line, and corner one is really unique and interesting. Oh. You you are ripping down yeah. this straightaway, and as we're getting ready to swing to the right, and then we're going to duck hard left into corner one. 
Uh, there are no cones, so it doesn't hold you from hopping the curb. So you can there a like lot of times. There is no curb. Yeah, yeah. See, it's flat right there, and it, everyone always hops that. Everyone hops it. You can take some hot lines uh, yeah. through there. Uh, corner number two here is kind of the same thing. I, I'm up on the curb there and hopping down. Uh, you, you can take that as you want to kind of set yourself up as as you move into some of uh, some of the more technical sections here. Um, typically here, you're you're plowing into a little bit of a headwind as you're coming into this right-handed corner, and it's going to be a really quick transition from right to left, to left, to left. And that's why it's important to um, to be in good position through uh, this technical section because if you're on the front, if you're attacking something like that, then you can take a good line. You don't have to do a thousand, a thousand watts like Chris is doing right here. You can, you can do a, a more um, measured effort and more consistent effort. And instead of being on the brakes or, or coasting and then doing a thousand watts, you can kind of sit at 500 instead. And that's like so much more efficient, so much easier. Totally. This, this um, field always gets so stretched out on this course. I don't know if it's, what is it the nature of the course or is it just the field being kind of tired and still, still some really strong guys towards the front? Like, why is this field always seem like it's stretched out single file for like the <laughs> entire start finish straight? It's, you know, it's a pretty technical course. You, you, you've got six corners. Um, if I'm counting correctly, is it six corners or five? Two, three, four, five, six. Six <laughs> corners. Uh, six corners is, is a is is a is a lot. Plus, you get a direction change. You know, you're you're not all one direction on your corners. And it's like one kilometer, right? It's like six corners yeah, over a short, it's, it's, short amount. It's of time. fast. The short the straights are short, and so you know you really can. And you see Joey here on the front for Simper Poro. Um, uh, Joey's trying to protect. Uh, Eno, who is his teammate and, and currently in the GC lead. For them, uh, you know, I think if, if I was in their position, the strategy would be to, to ride a relatively high pace at the front to discourage uh, attacks from going away over the top um, and to, to avoid those moments where the course bunches up. You, you, everybody knows that when the course bunches up, that's when you start to get a bunch of flyers. So Joey is doing a really good job. He's got a big threshold, a big engine, and he can just sit there um, I don't know what we're doing a bunch. We're going fast. Yeah, it's 27 20, miles an 20, hour. 27, so. you just sitting there on the front. Yeah, Joey's pretty comfortable, I think, at that pace. And uh, and for him, he's going to be able to ride that and, and keep it so it is strung out. And that, I think on a course like this, it's technical. It makes it harder for people to move up. All right, looks like you're following an attack here by Cliff. Cliff's trying to get away. Are they trying to go for a stage win? I, th I think they always are. Yeah, uh, Steph there. They're opportunists. Is, uh, yeah, uh, they 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 were kind of doing double duty. I think at this same time was the first USA crit, so they had squads split across that. And uh, for for Cliff Bar, you know, they they had a really good race uh, at the first USA crit. They took the win down there in Texas. I think oh, it was yeah? El Paso, right? Yeah, yeah. I didn't realize they'd won it. Congrats, Cliff. Um, I, I don't know what audio is going to be playing right here, but I I was yelling at this kid a lot. Uh, if anybody has had the, the, the privilege of racing with me, and I, I apologize oh. right ahead. Here you go. Uh, I yell a lot, and I don't mean to be offensive. I apologize. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm just vocal. Oh. I, just, I just like to be friends with everyone in the, in the pack. <laughs> so I'm sorry if I ever yell. But it worked. Look, look, you, uh, you drew him out. Now he's going hard. Uh, so, he's uh, coming across. Yeah. Oh, and I, now he's want, now make, he wants you. That doesn't make a ton of sense. Um, <laughs> Don't no, worry. Yeah. I got this. Let me go to the front and continue doing more work. I got this. Um, so uh, I think right now we are actually coming into uh, lap 10. And so this should be one of the first point sprints. Um, this is an opportunity for me to take three points. Uh, if, uh, if I'm thinking about it correctly, I was four points behind Alexi and uh, taking three points here would be a pretty big deal. Put, so putting the pressure on. Yeah, I you know I got I got cycled through a little bit. The team knows that that we need to get these points out as a goal, and so you're gonna see them. They're they're super close to me, and you're gonna see Sam uh, and I think Andy uh, come up next to me on my right here to start trying to lead me out, um, and and make sure that we can hold position at the front of the race uh, for the last I don't know how many corners this is. So. Uh, here comes Andy all the way through, and then you're also going to see the guy that I was yelling at do a weird maneuver, which oh, probably that's sketchy. elicits more yelling. Well, because that was kind of unnecessary. Like, so, but if you look right here, like uh, just to think about the tactic, he came through and he was trying to get that line, and I pinned him to that outside wall. Now I have the, I'm coming back to Andy's wheel to get that draft. Andy's accelerating. I want him to go. You're going to see the guy in the yellow start to go again, and I want to make sure that I have the inside line yeah, on yeah. this corner as Definitely. we're coming into it. So I did do another acceleration there, which kept me clean on that inside line. And you can take it and wide I take fast. him all the yep. way out to the to Smart. the to the exit to make sure that I keep that line clean. Um, 
I, I think I actually almost got beat. There was somebody on the inside left there um, as we went. But you didn't even have to. I mean, this just shows how good, like, how important positioning is in sprinting. And so uh, this is Tyler Williams, yeah, keep in mind. Pro. <laughs> um, one Current one pro. thing, and I don't, I don't mean to cut you off on that. Um, again, we, we had two goals, right? We wanted to put Steven in a position to take time back on the GC, and we wanted to take those green, point, uh, uh, green jersey uh, sprint points. My other objective was any time Tyler or Alexi went up the road was to ride. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm capable of getting up the road and riding with some of these guys. Uh, and, and I still think I could probably take a, a couple of points if I was in that position. But now with, with Tyler and I up the road. Oh, that you guys is have putting, a gap right here. Exactly. We oh, do. nice. Uh, that's, that's putting pressure back on December Poro to have to come up. Because uh, I think Tyler's only in fourth place on the overall. Uh, they don't want to let anything like that start to go away. Gotcha. So, so for me to ride with Tyler and Alexi puts a lot of pressure back onto the other teams. So it's so it's a double benefit because it's not like you're going for GC, but this benefits your teammate who is Steven, who is going for GC because now your comp, your direct competition has to close this down because you're with the guy who is a direct threat to e GC. Exactly. And then as an added bonus, you get to um, go for for the easier green, green jersey points. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 you're right. It, it totally works twofold. If Tyler and I just so happen to stay away for the next 10 laps and, and work together, uh, that forces Semper Poro onto the front to have to work. Um, and then it makes it a little easier for me. I'm only sprinting against one other person. Yeah. So, uh, you know, would that's... He and, who, and would he contest it, you think? Uh, Tyler and Alexi uh, are former teammates, and, and you'll actually you'll see a little bit of foreshadowing later. Tyler offers up some help to Alexi trying to trying to keep uh, keep the sprints clear uh, for him uh, later in. But uh, but yeah, Tyler and I are good friends, and uh, I think that you know for me that's a good group. Um, now this might be actually the first time that you've seen Eno. Eno's on this beautiful purple bike and uh, is is adorned in the yellow jersey. Um, Resplendent. Yeah, resplendent is that the right word <laughs> i think so yeah look i'm a bike racer not a not a linguist uh i just hear it from other commentators when they talk about uh yellow jerseys always they always use that word i don't know why we should well, we should have pulled up like uh dictionary.com to make sure that we had some new vocabulary on here to seem smarter um eno absolutely crushed the time trial um you know, just to give credit where credit's due, Eno is one of the nicest guys you could you could see. We we were joking though, uh, in the road race, uh, Eno and Joey went to the front uh, in the crosswind section that first 16 miles, and they gutted it, and blew the race apart. Pulled it down in, into a group of say 10 or so in the lead group, and then the rest of it was just in in shambles behind. And they really did do a lot of that work by themselves. Uh, Tyler and Alexi uh, helped a lot too, um, but man, they're strong. Um, and and watching Eno's time trial he did a low 19 minute on the Chico time trial course uh I don't know what type of power you've got to do for that but like <laughs> a lot <laughs> it's a bunch um I think yeah. I did like a 24 minute um <laughs> last time I did I'm not going for GC by the way I'm on my road bike and um I did like 330 watts or something um so I don't know take off four minutes from that you gotta yeah. you gotta be doing jeez O well over 400 in a crazy crouched arrow yeah. position not for me no thanks I'm, so just to give a little bit of uh something to what i'm doing there which may seem a Do little a lot of abnormal I, I am but joey was on the front and and what i was kind of trying to make sure that we were doing was making sure that they had to ride harder at the front um, um just the type of rider i am i'm i i i, I can ex I, I i'm fine accelerating a number of times that just happens to be fine for me um and so again, you know, there were a couple of riders that were ready to roll, and with Joey on the front, we wanted to make sure it was really hard for him, so that he had to be doing more work than he really wanted to be doing. Um, at, at this time in the game, again, Joey is so strong that it's going to be tough to break him. Uh, this is Justin Mock. Uh, Justin used to be uh, a local NorCaler, um, but I believe he's been spending a lot of his time in Vermont these days. Um, but Justin rides for Mark Pro, the other kind of big NorCal team. We're, we're coming back now, I believe, into another one of the point sprints. So uh, I mentioned before that there are, uh, there are three intermediate sprints. There are three opportunities to score points. And the points go back. Uh, if you win it, you get three. If you're second, you get two. And if you're uh, third, you get one. Uh, so right up here, you can actually see a couple of cool players. Uh, my team is trying to take control. They want to make sure that I've got a nice, good lead out. Uh, I'm trying to find a comfortable wheel to sit behind. Um, Yellow jersey's not bad. Yellow jersey's not bad. And look at those hips. <laughs> I, I'd stay behind Eno all day. I don't know why I didn't. That was such a good wheel. 
Uh, I move up here to Alexi, and Alexi is the current wearer of the green jersey. Um, and you can kind of see that he's he's starting to try to work to make sure that that I'm not getting free points. So if I if I win this and he ends up in second, uh, I'm only getting a one point advantage, which would actually tie, tie us up, up on yeah. the road. Um, you know, I'm I'm always so proud of our team. You know, we we I can't say that we get it right every time, uh, but we do give an effort. I think I think I'm so proud that every time we go to a race, we always at least try to make it exciting. Um, and right here, they're 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 working to give a good lead out. So I I know that Alexi is right here, uh, but I want to come up and move up onto my teammate's wheel. So I come up and I kind of push him out a little bit. Um, didn't really fight for it too much. Alexi was maybe struggling a little bit with some. Or maybe of the he wanted to be behind you. I don't know. I think you know we talked about it earlier when we were talking about the last corners on this course, uh, especially with two guys still left in front of me. Um, coming out of that corner, this last corner first is is a really important thing. I actually think I go a little early here. Um, I was yelling at them, or at least trying to telepathically tell them to go faster. Um, but Got to protect the inside. Exactly, right here. protect that inside. I didn't want anybody to come up. Uh, Steven swung to the to the right there to make sure that he made sure nobody could go to the outside. Uh, and uh, open up the sprint, and we come on through. Um, these aren't huge sprints; they're intermediate sprints, so we're not, you know, we're not 1,500 watts or anything. You had to work a little harder for that one. I noticed on the, the last one, you um, your position was so good, and you talked about your strategy mm -hmm. about taking the inside and then swinging out wide, and you and you closed off that that lane, that passing lane on your right, in the first sprint, and you only had to do like 800, 800 or 900 watts uh, to win that last sprint. This one, it looked like you you, you came up to 1,250, which which for me is a lot. Um, it seemed like you had to, you had to do yeah, uh, a bit more work. Well, you couldn't see it, but Alexi was actually off there to my left uh, and took second in that point sprint. So for those of you keeping track, we are now tied on the road, um, which means there are, there are really two more opportunities to take points. Uh, and do you know who the tie would go to in this point? Is it the... Oh, I don't know that. Actually, you know, I think I was all hopped up on Mountain Dew while we were rolling around out here, and I had no <laughs> idea what was going on. Uh, I was just I was I was focused on on taking those sprints and again making Simperpora work pretty hard. Um, you know we we do have a, a, a I hate to call this a third goal. Um, we don't go into a crit or into a circuit race without wanting to hunt for the stage win. Um, Justin Paulson. Gosh. Uh, is he trying to take you off the back? I or don't. Something? I honestly don't know. I think <laughs> he he's does just a lot. checking his legs out. Um, <laughs> Just, just in the more middle. acceleration than anybody I know of. Well, I just don't know why he had to do that. No, that there just was didn't no make reason. a ton of sense. Like even just scoot to the side. I'll, I'll, I'll happily weld that back together. <laughs> You've seen me working at the front. I'll just do it. Um, just, just letting you know. Look, I can accelerate, bro. Well, he looked at me too. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> stay close to me, Justin. I want to look at your little moon boots you got on right there. Those are nice. Um, Justin is super talented. He's, he's a young kid, and I think that. Um, you know, as any sprinter, you, you, you kind of have to have a little bit of attitude. Yeah. I think that's important. And, and Justin does. Um, I, I, good God, save the audio on this thing. Uh, I, I know I yell at Justin at some point and say, Justin, you're just bad at bike racing. Uh, and I don't mean it. I love the kid to death. Uh, I, I think it's so great to have people like him out at the races and, 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 we're, and, and just wanting to be a part of the community. It's, it's, it's great to have him. So, um, you know, Justin does some weird stuff speaking of uh but it's it is really great to have him out here. you try to avoid doing that as much as possible doesn't seem to bother justin which which speaks to how talented he is i mean i like i don't want to do unnecessary thousand watt surges totally um but he's that, just like comfortable with it it's it's yeah. he's, he's a freak of nature yeah um he, one of my good friends is actually is is danny holloway uh to name drop yeah danny uh, uh but danny uh danny actually gave me a good piece of advice a long time ago and i think this probably uh, could or should resonate with with most racers. Um, you know, Danny was telling me that over the course of the day, you really have to manage your efforts. And and every time you strike a match, uh, that's just one more you don't have, right? So anytime you're doing, you know, whatever it is for you that's hard, if it's if it's 200 watts or 300 watts or 400 watts, whatever is like a hard effort, every time you see that number pop up on your power meter. Uh, that's something you're not going to have at the end of the race. So I always try to remind my guys and Mike's bikes before a race, you know, manage your efforts. Try not to peak. Try not to do 500 watts. Try not to, to see that. Close the gap slow. Keep things together. Make sure your heart rate's not spiking and you're not going crazy. Yeah. Um, you know, Justin, like we were talking about, seems to be able to do that pretty comfortably. But uh, I think for most racers, it's pretty important to stay within their means. 
So I think we're coming back around now for the third and final sprint. Uh, I've got Alexi right in front of me. This is lap 25 in the race. And I really want to make sure that I stay on him so that I can, I can do my best to come around. Uh, Joey, if you heard him right there, Joey came up and, and s said, hey, man, I'm going to get you to the line. Um, next to me on my out outer side is, is Tyler Williams, um, former teammate of Alexi, and, and is doing a good job. He's trying to protect him, trying to keep the, the line narrow, so, uh, so it makes me have to work a little bit harder. Um, but I really, really, really want to hold on to that wheel, so I'm, I'm, I'm working to fight Tyler for it. Uh, I think he's still right there. I think I shut the door on him right here and i don't think we're gonna see him again but uh joey's up at the front oh nope he's still there any uh joey's up at the front and and keeping the pace high and and that was kind of what joey had promised like i'm gonna keep the pace high and you know you still have to put your legs where where you need to be in order to put yourself into this sprint um tyler's still trying to crowd me off that wheel um but we're coming in and i want to make sure i don't have to deal with it so Ooh, i go going way early, early. Yeah. and <clears throat> and what that gives me the opportunity to do is to swing back wide and take a nice clean line and protect that inside. Uh, drop power pretty low. And but you then, didn't have to touch brakes. Exactly, didn't have to touch brakes and I can come back out and accelerate nice and hard through the finish line. Uh, Alexi does hop onto my wheel and he does stay right next to me, but it was pretty clear that I had that from a ways out. Uh, so now, yeah. for those of us keep track, <laughs> uh, I have moved into the lead. I'm one point up. Um, and there are still, on the finish line of the race, there are still five points left. But Alexi and I have been fighting a lot already, and uh, uh, I think we're both probably pretty tired. So, t so tell me, there's, there's sprint points on the line. Do those also translate as their cash prizes, uh, anything like that, for the sprint points? Or is it, is it just purely green jersey points for those sprints? Like, are you having to fight off other people who, have, who aren't involved in there's the race? There's glory. <laughs> Which, I think <laughs> which is, is everything <laughs> look at that that was it resplendent jersey was yeah, that it right it, yeah. look at that green jersey. Pulled the thesaurus really fast uh, i think after that sprint alexi and i ended up off the front and so now we're going to cruise for a bit um uh i'm not sure if the audio is up or you can hear him but uh we had some words there for a second and he he was like hey man let's ride we're off the front because alexi is still in third place on gc right now so you're um, I'm cool with that. Yeah. I, you know, even though technically on the road, um, he is a little ahead of Steven, you know, it's one of those things. It's always going to be tough for two guys to stay away, but I'm happy to trade pulls with him. It's hiring him out. Um, it's, it's making Semper Poro work. And, and like I said, you know, we wanted to set Vogel, Steven Vogel up, uh, Dr. Watts, uh, up for a late attack. And so to have Alexi tired, to have, uh, Semper Poro tired, it, it does, fall into our favor on that. So Alexi and I are going to ride for a bit. So we're coming through now um, and uh, getting a little bit later in the race here. We're getting some fatigue in a lot of the riders. Uh, and, and right now, uh, my teammate Steven Vogel is taking a flyer. Uh, you can kind of see him starting to drift up the road there. Um, I can't, that looks like Roman. That just looks like how Roman rides his bike. Um, uh, Another teammate of yours. Yeah, how Roman Killen rides his bike. Um, so one thing that we didn't mention, I think at the, at the top of the top of the show is that, um, you know, crits off, oftentimes have preems, uh, a lot of preems throughout the race that, that give you a point to sprint at some, you know, random point to win a little cash or a bottle of wine or something. Uh, winner, Chico, of, the next winner of the next lap. Gets exactly. A winner, winner of the next, next lap gets a prize. Uh, in this case, uh, there weren't a lot of preems. There was one mega preem. And uh, it was $1,000, and it was put on by uh, Greenline Cycles out of Chico, um, the local bike shop who uh, has also done a really great job of throwing a massive party. They had a ton of people, like four or 500 people out to watch the race, um, and, and they all fundraised to, to be able to generate uh, equal payout for men and women, 1000 bucks for each race. Uh, and from that, uh, anything above and beyond the premiums that they offer, they, uh, they throw it to charity for locals in town. Um, so right now they're ring, ringing the bell, and this is Prem Lap. This is the big boy Prem. So next person across the line wins a thousand dollars cash, exactly. and that's why these attacks are going crazy. Exactly. And actually, uh, up at the head of that chase is my teammate Stephen Vogel. Uh, Stephen again is that guy that we want to get up the road uh, to try to save a little bit of, uh, to try to get a little bit of time on on uh, uh, on Eno. Uh, tough thing here is that Eno is right with him. He's actually sitting third wheel. So I'm starting to squirt across. Um, I ended up in a good position. I had been in the back relaxing after those first three point sprints, and now I'm moving up onto the back of Dylan Caldwell. Uh, Dylan's phenomenal, a uh, really great kid that's racing for Argonaut this year, doing a bunch of gravel. 
Uh, I'm going to jump around Dylan and come up onto Alexi. Uh, I know that Alexi can Look sprint, at that line. Right? That's a good line right there, Chris. I also talk to Sam as I'm going under my teammate Sam and tell him that, hey, I'm underneath you. Don't come down. Oh, he's going to lead you out into this. this exactly. Alexi's coming up really hard here. He wants the inside line on that. Steven's going to shut the door on the guy from Wildlife. I think that's Ross Kent. And I'm going to have a perfect clean line to come up and around He should have gone outside. wide right there. He left that open. Oh, he should have shut that door. Yep. Uh, he did not. And it Look sadly cost him a thousand dollars cash money that's a thousand dollar premium that right was a thousand dollar premium awesome that, good work uh, not gonna lie that felt good uh, you know and it worked really well steven didn't mean to attack at that time but i think everybody kind of started clicking into the place right and and i think that type of communication is really great steven understood that as his effort was coming to a close he moved wide and forced ross to to have to move far to the to the right and close that line down that let me uh, kind of do the task at hand, which was which was keeping on Alexi's wheel and doing that big acceleration one more time to come around him. All right, so um, aside from the point sprint, aside from trying to get Vogel up on that GC, uh, I suppose uh, all bike races have to come to an end, don't they? Yeah. And uh, we have to try to figure out how to do something here. Um, we just passed five to go. We just passed five laps to go. Um, you guys are already organized at the front. Yeah, you know, we, we were the biggest team in this. We had the most guys, and, you know, we knew that that was going to be something important to try to take it with a fair bit to go. We wanted to make sure that we uh, had control and could control the pace. Um, I am currently in a battle with Justin. Uh, let's, I'll talk you through what, what our strategy was. Uh, Matt Chatalong is our sprinter here. Uh, we had two sprinters at the beginning of the race, but uh, Garrett Hankins fell ill after he won the first stage and uh, wasn't able to complete the road race. So Garrett's out. Now we've just got Matt. Um, but we have tons of horsepower. We still have five guys in the race, and, and we want to make sure that we can put Matt in the best position possible. Um, Matt, for those of you guys that know him, uh, is a, a massive sprinter. And I think the thing that I've been most proud of with him is how much his aerobic capacity has come up lately. I, I, I finished a couple of races last year where I, I was just – eyeballs falling out of my head and Matt's still there and it's like for me that's terrifying because he's <laughs> such a good sprinter um, close to 2,000 watts uh, it's huge exactly you know and and he's also got incredible pack handling um, and he really does a good job so what we were going to do we were going to have uh, Roman Vogel um, Sam uh, rotating at the front and then Andy in front of him uh, Matt chat and then I was supposed to be trying to sweep but as you've been noticing here over the last lap I've been battling with Justin Paulson what's um, what's sweep so sweeps at the, at the yeah end. yeah so sweep is uh, stay behind your sprinter right Matt's gonna actually be the guy sprinting um, if I can come around come around great but it, it gives you a buffer in between other riders potentially and your uh, other riders and whoever else is gonna sprint off the wheel um, Gives him a guaranteed wheel on, the, on your teammate in front of you. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, that's going to keep Justin a full bike length behind. Um, we had a debrief on this. If we had to do it again, uh, I would have been up in front and rotating, and we would have put Andy Gosling back behind. Andy is another phenomenal sprinter, super capable of winning some big stuff, has had podiums at nationals as well. Uh, Andy had a podium two years ago in the crit um, with a phenomenal sprint. So, you know, Andy's a really good guy for crits. Um, the reason that we had me behind was again for green jersey, right? If I'm able to hold Matt's wheel and I'm able to come through on that last lap and, and score a point or two, that's going to really help pad uh, taking everything over. Um, admittedly, I'm not the most comfortable guy when I'm in the scrum. It's tough for me. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm challenged with it every time, but it's something that I as a racer uh, have been trying to get better at. But it's tough um some people have it some people don't and and if you want to intimidate me out there like fucking swarm me uh that's just the that's the way to do it i i Wait, it, let me write that down really fast oh sorry <laughs> uh so i'm battling here i'm trying to keep matt's wheel um we've got i think two and a half to go um i'm not doing a great job uh admittedly the guys are doing a really good job of trying to keep this together they're keeping the pace high um, this but is I the think, scrum. This is the, the hardest yeah, part right here. You know, this is a really difficult part for if you're if you are a sprinter, and you're you know two and a half laps to go, being in good position, admittedly right here. But it's so hard. It's just everyone's battling for the same position. You know, behind the lead out. Yeah, and it's you know it's kind of extra tough too. I think most people in this position are kind of aware that maybe I'm not going to be sprinting for the win. Uh, they know that Matt Chatalong's in the race, and they know how good of a sprinter he is. They know how capable he is. So they really want his wheel, not my wheel. They're not going to just, like, give up 
uh, six feet of road to, to be on that wheel. And so you can see that they've kind of moved up here. Um, we're going into two to go. And I think Eesh, right there, yikes. I ended up in a pretty bad position. Uh, I should have been protecting the wheel and I wasn't. Um, I'm a little sheepish about not being able to do a better job at it, but I, I ended up having to grab a full lock of brakes there. And uh, uh, Ferretti from A Main, uh, who's another phenomenal sprinter, uh, came in front of me and I wasn't able to hold the wheel. So now I'm going backwards, um, which is pretty bad. Uh, but what we've got going on up in the front is we still have uh, Sam Anderson Moxley uh, on the front, Roman Killen, and then we've got Steven Vogel, who is going to be the last man uh, for. Uh, for Matt Chat. I think Andy Gosling has also accidentally slipped out of position here. And so we have three guys left to try to go through this final lap. Um, from where I am, you know, I hate to say it, but I'm out of this bike race. There's too far there's, back at this yeah, point. There's there's nothing that I can do um, at this point. Are you concerned forward. about your uh, about your points? Are you concerned about Vermeulen? Uh, I think snagging the green jersey at this point. I think in my mind, since I had won the first three, I thought that I had like a million point lead. I didn't realize it was one point, so <laughs> I wasn't. Uh, but is I, it top three for the for the finish? Do you know? Uh, it's top five top for the five. finish. So, so you may be sweating I was, a little bit. I was, I was, I was, I, I would have been sweating had I known the actual spread. Well, Alexi's not not really a sprinter, but he's just cla a classy bike racer, yeah, and he might be able to top five again. Horsepower and acceleration. He does a great job of it. Um, we're coming through and we're dropping off riders right now. Um, I think that we have missed this by just a little bit and we only have Steven Vogel on the front now. Uh, so it's just Vogel and Vogel's got to take us through, uh, the last three corners. Um, we go through these and we're going to come on to the final straight. So you've got a left, a left and a left, left to the finish line here. Um, Justin, Paulson is on Matt Chat's wheel. He's done a really great job of positioning and holding that. Uh, I saw that firsthand. Uh, and as we come down the final straight into the last left-hander, Justin takes a massive dig and goes underneath Matt. Um, and as he comes out of that corner, he's got a lot more momentum. Matt takes a big run on it and comes back towards the line. And it's less than six inches at the line, but Justin did totally get it. Um, you know, And I think that's something that, that Justin's really been working on, taking that confidence uh, to the line. He took that great line through the corner. He knew he had to be last through or first wheel through the last corner and he went for it uh, and it paid off for him. Uh, so, you know, congrats to them. Uh, for us, we talked a lot about it after uh, the race of how we would have switched up the lead up train. Um, put me in a place where I could provide more horsepower and put Andy in a place where he could sweep as a better job. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. Um, this concludes the Chico stage race again with Chris Reichert, Team Mike's Bikes. Uh, you guys have had a phenomenal race, green jersey, stage win, second on the GC. And um, we have a lot of other footage lined up. Um, also, maybe uh, some other teams, some other guys from other teams. And um, I'm kind of liking this format. If you guys are interested in seeing more, drop a like, hit subscribe, let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, Chris? Yeah, thank got winning footage from a, a recent race. So yeah, I'd love to do this again with you. Um, for sure. Yeah, we, uh, you know, it, it's been it's been a lot of fun. I think you know, for me, looking at this in hindsight, it's it's great. And uh, if anybody has questions, uh, throw them in the comments. We're being a little long on our exit here, but um, we've got some cool ideas. Uh, anybody that has cool footage as well, uh, send them over to Jeff at uh, five 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 uh, <laughs> GarminPowerFiles.com. That's, that's the one. NorCalCyclingVideos at gmail.com. Try that too, if the 555 number doesn't work. NorCalCyclingVideos at gmail.com. See you guys later, thanks.